Good morning. I'm Leah Clark, your junior superintendent for Sunday school here at College Hill. I'm delighted to be able to join you all this morning to share a summary of this Sunday's lesson. Today's discussion comes from lesson number 13 for May 24th, 2020. This is still part of the spring quarter and is in unit three, called to God's work of justice. Our lesson today is entitled, Do the Right Thing. Our devotional reading comes from Psalm 72, verses 1 through 17. The background scripture is Jeremiah chapter 22. The print for this lesson comes from Jeremiah chapter 22, verses 1 through 10. Today's key verse says, Do no wrong or violence to the foreigner, the fatherless, or the widow, and do not shed innocent blood in this place. Jeremiah chapter 22 Verse 3b, the New International Version. Today's lesson is yet another message from the prophet Jeremiah. The Lord sent Jeremiah to the leaders of Judah to confront them on their wrongdoings. This meeting can be broken into three sections. The first section is a face-to-face -face warning. Jeremiah chapter 22, verses 1 through 4. God told Jeremiah to address the leaders of Judah directly. One by one, Jeremiah talked to each leader and told them how they were mistreating their own people. He explained how leaders are expected to bring justice to those they lead. Also, they're supposed to protect those who are at a disadvantage, such as the poor, the sick, and those without a family to support them. However, Judah's leaders neglected their responsibilities of serving the people. Jeremiah stressed to the leaders that they should return to God's favor for their own sake, as well as the sake of their people. Our second section is God makes a promise to himself. Jeremiah chapter 22, verses 5 through 7. Upon being confronted by Jeremiah, the leaders of Judah were shocked as they felt that them being put in such high positions meant that God would never reprimand them. However, they soon came to learn that no matter what positions they held, God still didn't appreciate their disobedience. Since Judah's leaders broke their covenant with God, God promised himself that he would punish them for what they had done. Of course, God loved Judah, but he had to keep his promise. Thus, he sent the Babylonian army to destroy Jerusalem. The third section of this lesson is retributive justice. Jeremiah chapter 22, verses 8 through 10. The leaders of Judah had caused their people to stray from God and instead worship other gods. God had given them a chance to repent, but they had yet to do so. This caused God to call for retributive justice, which means that if someone breaks a law, it's required by justice for them to suffer in return. In this lesson, God reminds us that he is a God of mercy and love. He is also a God of justice. In our covenant with him, God expects us to be obedient and do what we know is right. So, when we do stray, he reprimands us in order to get us back on track. Just like many of us have heard our parents say while chastising us, I'm doing this because I love you. God is our father, and he does the same only because he loves us. I thank you all for joining me this morning for our Sunday school lesson. And I hope that each of you have been able to take something from it. As always, let us end with our closing prayer. Oh God, may this lesson today resonate in our hearts so that we will be more obedient to your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. When praises go up, blessings will come down. The youth ministry will sponsor a praise parade trunk shower for College Hills High School graduates on Saturday, May 30th at 12 noon outside the church. We are asking each ministry to join the fun as we celebrate our graduates in this unique way. Each ministry is asked to be represented in the praise parade with decorated cars, trucks, and gifts for each graduate. Individual members and families are encouraged to participate. Our graduates are Malayla Walden and Jerry Buddy Mitchell III. Parade details to come. 
look forward to seeing you on Saturday, May 30th at 12 noon. brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, let me tell you, it is good for us to be here. I am glad the Lord has awakened us today to see a brand new day. This is the day that the Lord has made. We are commanded to rejoice and be glad in it. It is always good to gather together for worship because we serve a God who is indeed worthy of our worship. Yes, he is. Let me preface this message by simply stating how blessed we were uh, to hear from our junior superintendent this morning, Ms. Leah Clark, who has done a phenomenal job with our Sunday school lesson this morning. We thank God for her. What an outstanding job she did and and I pray that she will continue to allow God to use her in such a powerful way. Amen, amen. And now it's time to hear a word from the Lord. I pray you have your Bibles with you. Amen. And I'm going to ask now that you would turn with me to the New Testament, uh, Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, the second chapter and the ninth verse. That is 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse number 9. I hope that you will turn with me. If you look with me, you will discover these words. This is what Paul says. He says, but as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Amen, amen. Actually, the Apostle Paul is saying that the best is yet to come. That, that's what he's saying in these, in, in these words. In this particular verse, in this passage of Scripture, Paul is declaring emphatically that the best is yet to come. Oh, yes, he is. Listen, let, 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 me, let me begin this sermonic journey by simply saying that the best is defined as of the highest quality. Yes, it, it means excellence in work. We, we have set aside this day, this time, to honor our high school and college graduates, and our golden diploma recipient, Sister Catherine James, all of whom, uh, whose achievements have been just extraordinary. We thank God for each of them. We, we salute our graduates today because they have actually achieved excellence in their work. And so to all of our graduates, I want to personally say how very proud I am of each and every one of you. Your, your years in school have finally paid off. Yes, yes, yes. Your, your long hours in study have produced some visible fruit. And your sacrifices of people and pleasures have awarded you outstanding dividends that you will cherish for a lifetime. Oh yes, oh yes. I want you to know how proud I am of each and every one of you. In fact, graduates, when we see you, we see the best. We see the best because you have demonstrated your best in your courses, in your classes. You have demonstrated your best in your character. And you have demonstrated your best in your community and even in your church. Yes, we are proud of you. 
because you have given and demonstrated your best. And so I've come today to ask something of you. Or rather, I, I would that you would promise me one thing, that wherever you go, you will continue to give your best. If, should you decide, should, should you decide to further your education, give it your best. Should you decide to embark upon a career, give it your best. And most of all, most importantly, as a citizen of these United States of America, I ask that you give your best to your country and give your best to our Christ. I know this is not difficult for you to do. This is not a, a difficult task. This is not a difficult assignment for you to do because you are, you, you, you are the epitome of the best. You, you are the essence of the best. In fact, you embody the best. Yes, allow me to say it like this. You, you are the pattern and, and the prototype and the personification of the best. So I ask you from the depths of my heart to continue to demonstrate your best. Let, let, let me tell you, let me tell you, our, our church is counting on you. Oh, yes, our community is counting on you. Our country is counting on you. And most of all, our Christ is counting on you. D did you not know that our God has invested so much into each of you. Oh yes, oh yes, our God has literally deposited so much goodness and grace into each one of you that you can't do anything other than give God your best. In, in fact, in fact, graduates, you have to give God your best because he has given so much to us. Yes, he has, yes, he has. Here is the good news. Here is the good news. Even though God has given us his best by giving us his son and, 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 the, and the wonderful opportunities to achieve because of his son, even though God has done all of this for us, the good news is God has more of the best awaiting for each of you. Yes, he has. Yes, he has. It's, it's spelled out in the text. It's spelled out in the text. It, it, listen, even though you have accepted the best, even though you have achieved or accomplished the best, and even though you are the appearance of the best, because you are made in the image and likeness of God, the text says that God has more of the best waiting just for you. In other words, God is saying to you today, the best is yet to come. That, that's what he's saying. He's, he said, no matter what you have achieved, no matter how great it is, God is saying, I've got something more in store for you. The best is yet to come. In, in Paul's first letter to the church at Corinth, yes, in, 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 this, in, this, in this second chapter, and the ninth verse, the Apostle Paul is paraphrasing the prophet Isaiah in this particular passage of scripture. And he paraphrases the prophet Isaiah uh, from Isaiah chapter 64 and verse number 4. The, the, the Apostle Paul takes Isaiah's words and makes them his own words. And, and, and this is what Paul says. Paul, Paul, Paul says this. He says, but as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them who love him. Oh, yes, in other words, in other words, the best is yet to come. I, I, know, I, I know right now you are excited, and I know right now you are thrilled. Yes, and you, you are as happy as you can be, and rightfully so, but I've come to tell you today the best is still coming. Oh, yes, I, I, I know you have your diploma and you have your degree, but I've come to tell you today the best is yet to come. That, that's what God is saying to us today. I understand you on cloud nine, and, and you should be. You should be excited, but God is saying, hold on. The best is still coming. 
Yes, it is. Yes, it is. The best is yet to come. So the question is, the question is, what is this best that God has for us? What, what is this best that God has for his children? If the best is yet to come, what is this best? Well, Paul tells us in this passage of Scripture exactly what it is. But before God reveals the best in, 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 in his word, God is saying to you today, he's saying, he said, before I tell you now, he says, I need to qualify myself. He said, he said, I need to qualify those who are receiving the best. Yes, yes. Watch what he says. He says, he says, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love him. That, that phrase, prepared for those that love him, means those who serve him, those who are faithful to him. This is what God is saying. First of all, watch this now. First of all, he says that the best is reserved for a faithful people. That's what he's saying. He's saying the best is reserved for a faithful people. In other words, watch this. In order to receive the best, you have to be your best. Oh yes, in order, in order to get the best from God, we, we have to give our best to God. In order, in order to receive the best, we have to live our best. We have to be faithful unto God. And I need to tell you that God rewards faithfulness. Yes, he does. Oh, oh it's good to have the right focus. But, but God rewards faithfulness. It's, oh, yes, it's good to, to, to live a fantastic and fabulous life. But God rewards faithfulness. It, it is even good to be friendly. But God... Yes, he does. He rewards faithfulness. Yes, he does. He, and and even, even in the book of Revelation, yes, at chapter 2 and verse 10, in, in that last portion of verse number 10, Jesus says this. He says, be thou faithful unto death, and I will give you a crown of life. God rewards faithfulness. And he has reserved the best for a faithful people. Let me tell you three things about, about being faithful. First of all, watch this now. You've got to be faithful in working. You've got to be faithful in working. Graduates, you've already proven to us that you know how to work. Oh, yes, you, you've proven that to us, that you know how to work. Yes, you have. You, you, you've gone through so many years of schooling. You, you, you know how to work. Yes, you have earned your diploma and your degree. We, we know that you know how to work. Oh, yes, you, you, you spent long hours in study to get where you are today. We know that you understand what work is all about. Yes, yes, but I've come to tell you that it's not enough to have a good work ethic. Yeah, here on the earth. It's, it's not enough to have a good work ethic in secular education, but we must have a spiritual work ethic, yeah, in Christian education. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. We, listen, we, we work for God, and all of us need to understand that, that, that all of us really work for the Lord. That, that no matter what career you, you land, no matter where you go, we need to remember that we have another employer. We have another supervisor. We, we, we have another boss that we have to report to who sits high and looks low. In fact, in fact, he is our eternal employer. He, he is our spiritual supervisor. He, yes, he, he is our brilliant and bona fide boss. That, that's who God is, and all of us must report to him. Yes, we do. God, God is the one who watches everything we do, and he's watching to see how faithful we are here on this earth. Jesus said it like this. Jesus said it like this in, in St. Matthew chapter 9 and verse 37. Jesus said this. He said, the, the harvest is truly plenteous, but the laborers are few. Brothers and sisters, all of us, all of us are 
laborers, all of us are workers working in God's vineyard. And one of these days, we're going to have to stand before God and give an account of our faithfulness. We're going to have to stand before God and give an account of how we've worked here on this earth. You've got to be faithful in your working. But secondly, secondly, graduates, let me tell you this. Not only must you be faithful in working, but watch this. You've got to be faithful in worshiping. Yes, you've got to be faithful in worshiping. I, I want you to know that wherever you go, don't forget the bridge that brought you over. I want to tell you today, no matter what you do, no matter where you go, no matter who you meet, listen, don't ever forget who's responsible for bringing you where you are right now. Don't, don't ever forget that there was a divine hand yeah, yeah, laid upon you that was guiding you every step of the way who brought you to this milestone in your life. I, I want to tell you, don't ever forget God. And whenever you think about God, it ought to cause you to give God some praise. When, whenever you think about what God has done for you, you ought to be excited about worshiping God. Whenever you think about what God has, has done by, by, by way of getting a diploma or getting a degree or, or, or getting a good education, getting a good job when it's all over, you need to remember God did it for you. He's the one who gives us the knowledge. He gives us the wisdom. He gives us the understanding. He gives us our skills and our talents our gifts and our abilities. It all comes from God. The Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from above. So all that we have, God gave it to us. And so we ought to worship God every chance we get. You ought to be filled with worship. And so even if you leave this area, you need to know that God is everywhere. And so you need to worship God wherever you are. You ought to find some time to worship God. David was excited about worshiping God. That's why he said, you remember that passage in that 122nd number of the psalm in that first verse. Listen to David. He said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Oh, you ought to have that same excitement because when I get into God's house, yes, I can worship him. When I get there, I can worship and fellowship with the saints of God. I'm glad to be able to worship God because he's done so much for me. You've got to be faithful in worshiping. You've got to be faithful in working. But can I tell you one more thing? As it relates to faithfulness, you, you, you've got to be faithful in witnessing. And brothers and sisters, if, if you have the best, if, if you have accepted the best, who is Jesus Christ, if, if you have the best living inside of you, yeah, let me tell you, you can't keep him to yourself. You, you can't keep him to yourself. If God has done anything for you, you have to tell somebody else. And I believe, I believe that you're never too young or too old to tell others what Christ has done in your life. And so you ought to shout it on the mountaintops. You ought to shout it down in the valleys of life. Everywhere you go, you ought to be able to tell somebody what the Lord has done for you. Oh, it's all right to talk about what God has done for others, but you ought to have a personal testimony every now and then and tell them what the Lord has done for you. You ought to be a witness for the Lord. And listen, let me tell you, there are two ways you can witness. You, 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 you can witness verbally. Oh, yes, because the scripture said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Yeah, you, you can witness verbally, but not only verbally. Watch this. You can also witness visually. Yeah, yeah, visually. In other words, in other words people ought to be able to see Jesus. In your lifestyle, they, they ought to be able to see Jesus in you. Everywhere you go, your, your light ought to be shining. That's what Jesus meant in his sermon on the mount. Yes, in that fifth chapter, verses 14 through 16, that's what Jesus meant 
when, when he said this. Je Jesus said, you are the light of the world. And then he said, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. N neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but, but, but on a candlestick. And it gives light to everyone in the house. Jesus said, that's how it ought to be with you. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and give God the glory who is in heaven. We, we, yeah, we ought to have a visual testimony of what God is doing in our lives. People ought to see Jesus in us. Yes, you've got to be faithful in your witness. And listen, the best is reserved for a faithful people, people who are faithful in working, faithful, yes, in worshiping, and faithful in witnessing. That, that, that's what Paul meant. That's what he meant. Eyes have not seen. Ears haven't heard. Neither has it entered the heart of man. The things that God has prepared for those who love him. But secondly, 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 Paul says something else. Paul says, now before I tell you what this best is, he says, he said, first of all, it's reserved for a faithful people. And then he says, he said, but something else, he says, he says, the best is given by the Father who prepared it. Oh, bless his name. Bless his name. It's, it's right there in the text. He says, eyes have not seen, ears haven't heard, neither has it entered the heart of man, the things that God has prepared for those who love him. It is the Father who prepared it. And let me tell you, church, you ought to be shouting right now. Oh, you ought to thank God right now that God is the one who prepared it. You ought to thank God right now that God is the one who gives us the best. Oh yes, you ought to thank God that, that, that I didn't give it to you. You ought to thank God that I didn't prepare it because had I prepared it, it would have some flaws. Had, had I prepared it, it would have some mistakes. But thank God we serve a God who is perfect, a God who is sinless, and a God who is no respecter of persons. Thank God. Thank God man didn't give it to us. Thank God man doesn't prepare the best or give us the best. Because man may show partiality. Man, man might not give it to those who truly deserve it. Man might give it to those who he wants to have it. But thank God we serve a God today who sees the best and he gives the best to those who deserve it. That's the kind of God we serve. Yes, you ought to thank God that, that, that he is the one who's preparing the best for us. And watch this now, watch this. Why is it the best that God has? Listen, what, what he prepared is indescribable. Oh, yes, it's indescribable. What God has prepared is indescribable. It cannot be described with words. Oh, it can't be described with our thoughts. It can't be described in pictures. Let, let, let me tell you, the Bible says eyes haven't seen it. Ears haven't heard it. It hadn't even be re been revealed uh, into the heart of mankind. The things that God has prepared for us, it's indescribable. Oh, and I don't know about you all out there, but I, that's the kind of blessing I want. I want an indescribable blessing. I, I, I ought to have some witnesses out there who want an, an indescribable blessing, a blessing that can't be described. Yes, that's what I want God to give me. I want God to give me an indescribable blessing. But not only what God prepares is indescribable, but watch this. What, what, what he prepared is indestructible. Oh, Lord, have mercy. In other words, not only uh, uh, can it not be described, but it can't be destroyed. Oh, yeah. In other words, it lasts forever. It lasts forever. Whatever God gives us, man can't destroy it. Man can't demolish it. When God gives us the best, it lasts forever. It has an enduring quality about it. And it lasts forever. Thank God, thank God, what he has prepared is indescribable and indestructible. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's the best. That, that's what God has given to us. 
Yeah, it's, 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 the best is, is given by the Father who prepared it. It's, 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 the, the best is reserved for those who are a faithful people. But then lastly, and I'm just about finished, lastly, I know you're wondering, well, Brother Pastor, what is this best? You, you say the best is yet to come. What, what is this best? Let me tell you what the best is. He, yeah, yeah, God, God says I had to qualify it. It's reserved for a faithful people. You needed to know that it's given by the Father who prepared it. But here's the best. The best is a future filled with promise. Oh yeah, that's what, that's what the best is. It, 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 it's a future filled with promise. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I don't know about you, but I, I'm determined to give God my best. And I want to challenge you today to give God your best. Let me tell you, if you give your best, if you live your best, if you love your best, if you pray your best, if you believe your best, and if you be your best, God is saying that I can promise you a future that's filled with three things. And let me tell you what they, what they are. Guys, I can promise you three things in your future. First of all, you'll, you'll have a power that cannot be hindered. Oh, oh it's true. It's true that, that a good education will give you a certain amount of power. Yes, yes, it, it is true that getting your diploma or degree will give you a certain amount of power. It, it is true that landing a great career will give you a certain amount of power. And it is true that financial stability will give you a certain amount of power. But that's not the best power in the world. Or oh, the best power in the world is God's power. The power that God can give. It's, it's not earthly power. It's really eternal power. And that's the power that God gives us. Yes, he does. Watch this. He, he gives us the power of his presence. He gives us the power of provision. And he gives us the power of protection. Isn't it wonderful to know that wherever you go, you got God's power. That no one can destroy you. Nothing can happen because the power of God surrounds you. Oh, it's good to know that along with the degree, I got God's power. Uh, along with my education, I, I got God's power. Along, along with a good job, I've got God's power. Along with a great financial portfolio, I have God's power. Oh, it's wonderful to know that you got God's power. And that's what God promises. He promises you a future that's filled with the promise of power. A power that cannot be hindered. But secondly, he promises you a peace that'll take you higher. Oh, yes. Listen, as quiet as it, as it is kept, as quiet as it is kept, let me tell you, an education can't give you real peace. As quiet as it is kept, a good job cannot give us real peace because real peace is an internal phenomenon. Yes, yes, real peace, authentic peace, genuine peace is something you have on the inside. Oh, yes, and you can only have authentic peace when you get acquainted with the Prince of Peace. And if the Prince of Peace is in your life, I promise you, you can have real peace. Peace that'll take you higher. Peace that says, I'm not worried about what other people say. I've got the peace of God in my life. That's what you've got to have. Oh, you've got to have the peace of God. That's what God promises you. He promises you a power that cannot be hindered. He promises you peace that'll take you higher. But most of all, and get this, he promises you a place that you can call home. You know, wouldn't it be sad if the only place we had to look forward to is the place where we currently reside? Wouldn't it be shameful? Wouldn't it be regretful? Wouldn't it be hurtful that the only place we have to look forward to is the place that we now call home? Oh, you don't hear me, but thank God today there is another place, and God promises us a future, yeah, with a place that we can call home. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And let me tell you, it's a beautiful place. It, it's a wonderful place. Oh, yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's, 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 it's a fantastic place. It's a holy place. It's a righteous place. It's a place where God dwells. And that's the place that God has prepared for you. And let me tell you, it's a place where all the bills are paid. All the bills are paid because the Bible says there's no night there. And that, and that the light of the sun will always shine. And if, if the light is always shining, that means the bills are always paid. Oh, y'all don't hear me. That, that's the kind of place we got. It's a place where there's no worries, no cares, no heartaches, no heartbreaks. No sickness, no, no pandemics, no coronavirus, no deaths, no, oh, no funerals. It's a wonderful place where there are no problems, no troubles, no corruption, no violence. Oh, it's a beautiful place, a place of joy, a place of love, and a place of peace. So I challenge you today, I challenge you today to live your best to give your best, to serve your best, be, be faithful your best. In other words, be your best. In the words of Douglas Mallock, if you can't be a pine on the top of a hill, be a scrub in the valley, but be the best little scrub by the side of the real, be a bush. If you can't be a tree, if you can't be a highway, just be a trail. If you can't be the sun, be a star. It isn't by size that you win or fail. Be the best, whatever you are. Oh, Lucy Campbell. Lucy Campbell could say it better than that. She says, if when you give the best of your service, telling the world that the Savior's come, be not dismayed. When men don't believe you, he'll understand. He'll understand. He'll understand and say, well done. Oh, give your best, serve your best, believe your best, be faithful your best. And I want to tell you, if you do that, then the best is yet to come. For God has the best reserved for those who live their best, who give their best, who are their best. I want to challenge you today. Brothers and sisters, be the best that you can be. And if you be the best, God says the best is yet to come. Oh, bless your heart today. I pray this word has been a blessing in your life. I pray that every graduate who has heard me this morning has been blessed by this word and that you take it to heart and take it everywhere you go that God has the best reserved for those who live their best for him. Oh, bless his name. I want to pray with you now. I want to pray with you. I want to pray with all of our graduates. I want to pray with every member of our church. And I want to pray with those who may not have accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. I, I want to pray for you. Maybe, maybe you don't have Christ. If you don't have Christ, you don't have the best. And, and you can't get the best without getting Jesus in your life. And so I want to challenge you to pray with me and, and ask Christ to come into your life. It's very simple. All you have to do is, is just confess your sins and repent of your sins and believe that Jesus died and rose again just for you. If you can believe that today, I promise you, you'll have the best. And when you get the best, you can look forward to what God has for us in the future. So will you pray with me now? Every, every head bowed, every eye closed. Oh, God, our Father, we thank you so much for your word this morning. Thank you, God, for reminding us that we are called to be our best. We are called to live our best. We are called to be faithful our best, to serve you our best, to love our best. If we be our best, Father, you promised us in your word that the best is yet to come. Eyes have not seen, 
ears have not heard, neither has it entered the heart of man, the things that you have prepared for those who love you. Oh, God in heaven, we thank you now. Help us, dear God, to continue to hold on, to continue to give our best, no matter what's before us, no matter who may be lazy, who may be slowful around us. God, help us to always live our best and to serve you our best, to be faithful every day of our lives. Then we can look forward to receiving the best from a loving father. Oh God, we thank you. And Master, I thank you for those listening now who may not know you as their personal Lord and Savior. I ask now, dear God, that you would forgive them of their sins, that you would come into their lives, that you would save them right now. Save them by your blood. Save them by your grace. Save them, God. That they too might experience the best they can look forward to what the future holds for them also. Father, we love you and we praise you. We pray for every graduate. And God, I pray that you will bless every graduate in the future. Father, bless them with good health. Bless them with spiritual prosperity. Father, let their, let their future days be days of joy and days of peace and days of your power. Oh God, let their future days be days where they experience the sweet love of Jesus the Christ. And Father, we thank you. Bless their paths. Help them to trust in you with all their hearts and lean not to their own understanding. In all their ways, may they acknowledge you Lord, you promise to direct our paths. We thank you and we give you praise. It is in the precious and promising name of Jesus the Christ. We pray and we say together, amen and amen. God's blessings be upon you this Sunday morning. I pray that you will have a blessed day. And that the word will follow you throughout this day and throughout this week. May heaven forever smile upon you. God's blessings be upon you. Pastor Williams, members of College Hill Baptist Church, visitors, and friends. It was 20 years ago that the College Hill family voted to award cash scholarships to high school graduating seniors on behalf of our late pastor, Reverend R.E. Willis. Reverend Willis served College Hill for over 24 years. He was a strong believer in the power of education. Since its inception, Mission Circle Number 7 has overseen the awarding of the scholarships. So it's on behalf of Mission Circle Number 7, President Sister Mary Joyce Sanders, that we have the privilege here today, Sister Denise Wright, Chairman of the R.E. Willis Scholarship Committee, and Pastor Williams here to present the recipients of the R.E. Willis 2020 scholarships. Hello, College Hill family. On behalf of General Mission Circle Number 7 and the College Hill family, we are here today to present scholarships to two deserving students who are graduating from high school to go ahead and matriculate at Jackson State University. These certificates read College Hill Missionary Baptist Church R.E. Willis Scholarship Award, $1,500 awarded to Malayla Walden on this May the 24th, 2020. Malayla. Congratulations. Thank you. And the same is also presented to Jerry Mitchell III, who will also receive 
a $1,500 scholarship award. Congratulations. Thank Congratulations. You. In addition to the two scholarships that were given to these beautiful high school students, it is my proud privilege and pleasure to present these two students with gifts from the College Hill Missionary Baptist Church. I am indeed proud as pastor of this church to present these gifts to each of you. First, Malayla Walden. And secondly, to Jerry Mitchell III, whom we affectionately call Buddy. God bless you. God bless you. God's blessings be upon both of these students. We pray them God's blessed in the near future. God bless you. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Saluting the graduates of College Hill Baptist Church. Congratulations, class of 2020. Your College Hill family is proud of you. Delight thyself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Jerry Mitchell III is a graduate of Jim Hill High School. He plans to attend Jackson State University and Heinz Community College. He is the son of Sonia Mitchell and the late Jerry Mitchell Jr. and the grandson of Jerry and Yvette Mitchell. Malayla Walden is a graduate of Mora High School. She plans to attend Jackson State University. She is the daughter of Janet Walden and Michael Walden. Justin Coleman is a graduate of Tougaloo College with a BS Chemistry Pre-Med degree. He is the son of Jimmy and Janora Coleman and the grandson of Lenora Reed. Michaela Hodges is a graduate of University of Mississippi with a Master of Science degree in Communication Sciences and Disorders. She is the daughter of Michael and Supreel Hodges. Demothenes Jones, a graduate of Heinz Community College where he received the Associate of Arts degree. His parents are Ricky and Latasha Jones, and his grandmother is the proud Mary Joyce Sanders. Hope Rees is a graduate of Jackson State University with a Bachelor of Science in Multimedia, Journalism, and Media Studies with a minor in Political Science. Her parents are Tim and Katrina Hansberry. Brianna D. Roberts graduated from Jackson State University with a Bachelor of Science in Professional Interdisciplinary Studies. Her parents are Cornell D. Roberts and the late Reverend Terry Roberts. Maggie Brittany Roberts graduated from Bellhaven University with a Master of Public Administration. Her parents are Cornell D. Roberts and the late Reverend Terry Roberts. Catherine James is celebrating the 50th anniversary of her graduation from Jackson State University, where she earned the Bachelor of Science degree in math in 1970. A 28-year educator with Jackson Public Schools, 
She retired in 2013 as a science and math teacher and math coach at Brinkley Middle School. Ironically, her JSU commencement was canceled in 1970 because of the Gibbs Green tragedy on the campus of Jackson State. This year, the JSU Golden Diploma commencement ceremony also was canceled due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We salute and congratulate Katherine James on receiving her Golden Diploma from Jackson State University. Congratulations, graduates. Don't stop learning. Don't stop dreaming. Don't stop pursuing. May you walk safely along the pathways of your dreams. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace.